The biggest iPhone customization update ever is here, iOS 16. So if you have an iPhone 8 or newer, then whip it out because now is the perfect time for the ultimate customization. So to get started with the very first customization feature, all you gotta do is hold down on your lock screen and now this new screen will pop up. Then just select add new and you'll get a ton of different suggestions and pre-made options to choose from. But let's start from scratch with a custom photo. Of course, you can choose any photo you'd like, but the magic happens in this depth effect. So how this works is you just use your two fingers to pinch and move the photo around until you're happy and have positioned it in such a way that your subject is now in front of the clock. This doesn't just work with people, but also with animals. And in some cases, it even works with paintings or statues, which is pretty monumental. So after you've decided on the exact photo you wanna use, you can swipe left to start checking out some filters. But if you're taking a professional portrait photo, you actually get a couple extra filters like this color wash or color backdrop, where you can choose from a couple of different colors and even change the saturation. We'll get back to a lot more on the lock screen but first, let me show you how you can customize your home screen wallpaper. So after you're done tweaking your lock screen, you can select done and you'll be asked if you'd like to customize the home screen. So the first thing you'll notice is that you can set your home screen to mirror your lock screen or to make it less busy, you can just use the blur option. You could also set it as a solid color or as a gradient. But my favorite option is to actually select another photo. So now after you've done finding a matching photo for your home screen, you can edit it pretty much the exact same way as your lock screen using the duo tone or color wash options. So I mean, as you can see, there are a lot of different customization options and I personally love contrasting colors. So I went for a blue as my home screen. You'll also now start to notice a whole bunch of different unlocking animations depending on how your lock screen looks. Photo Shuffle is also another huge favorite of mine, especially if you like your lock screen to change often. So you can select a whole bunch of different pictures, then add them, and then you can select how you'd like them to change. So they can either change daily, hourly, on lock, or on tap. So I love the on tap option because every time I tap my lock screen, it changes. I mean, that is just bananas. So yes, moving wallpapers are a bit limited on iPhones for now, but you do get this option, astronomy. You get five different options in total to choose from. So earth, the earth in detail, the moon, the moon in detail, and then finally you get the solar system. Now, depending on what you choose, you will actually see the earth or moon change depending on what's happening in real life. And you can even see your location on the earth wallpaper. The second moving wallpaper option is weather. And this literally mimics the weather outside. So in case you're stuck in a room without windows or a building, this one will keep you updated on how things are looking outside. So, I mean, those are just so awesome and actually put a huge smile on my face, but not as much as this next feature. Okay, so the emoji wallpaper is probably my number one favorite because you can get the most creative with this one. So once you've selected it, all you do is add a couple of your favorite emojis. Of course, mine have to be tech emojis, but you can go absolutely bonkers with this. Then you can choose your favorite grid mode. So there's small grid, medium grid, large grid, the rings, and my favorite, the spiral. Once you're happy with that, you can then choose a background color. Straight away, there are a bunch of different colors to choose from, which you can chop and change until you're happy, or you can click on this color wheel and get a bit more specific using all these different options or using the color picker. So I just chose a gray color from one of my emojis so that it would match really nicely and is probably also the easiest option. And for the home screen, you can also choose to keep it as the original or blur it, or you can even pair it with a gradient just to keep things a little less busy. But there's one last lock screen feature where you can show your true colors. 
the Color Lock Screen. This one is super simple, clean and minimalistic, but the magic is in how many different gradient color options you can get and they look so good. There are six different options to choose from in total, starting off with Vibrant, then we get Tone, Deep, Vapor, love this one, bright and a solid color. All you do is just choose the basic color and as you can see, each gradient gives you a different kind of color combo to play around with and get it to suit your style. But now that we're done with wallpapers, it's time to move on to the clock widget because there's actually a lot you can do with it. Okay, so to edit the clock, all you need to do is tap on it. <laughs> then right over here, you'll see a bunch of different fonts and also color options. So as you can see, you get eight different fonts to choose from that you can mix and match with your wallpaper. And if you tap on the globe icon, you will get a few more numeral options to choose from, which is pretty cool. Hopefully Apple adds a couple more fonts for us in future, but so far these ones are great because they can be matched with pretty much any wallpaper. And there's over 200,000 fonts in the world, so Apple's got plenty to choose from. Another really cool thing with the clock is you can change its color. So you can choose any one of these colors, or if you go to the far left, you can choose this option, which changes the clock color based on your wallpaper. Or for total control, you can choose the exact color hue you'd like using all these different color palettes or that super nifty color picker. So you can make some really interesting color combinations with the wallpaper, especially if you throw a duotone or color wash filter over it. But that color doesn't only affect the clock, it also affects the lock screen widgets. Okay, so lock screen widgets are basically quick previews of like your calendar, battery status, alarms, and all that jazz. To add them, just tap on add widgets, and now there are a whole bunch of different ones to choose from. And if you click on some of them, there are even more widget options. To add them, all you gotta do is tap them and that's it. So you can get a bunch of different options like having three small ones, two big ones, two small ones or one big one. Honestly, the options are endless and there's even a widget above the clock. And what's really cool is if you tap on any one of these widgets from your lock screen, it'll instantly open up the app. This is so useful and so convenient. But what's also really nifty is that certain app controls will now pop up on your lock screen, like when you're listening to music, or watching YouTube, or even if you have a timer running. So say you're listening to music, you now have full control over the songs, like scrubbing, skipping, and if you tap on the album artwork, it changes the entire lock screen. Once you're done having fun with all this customization and creating your lock screens and wallpapers, you can assign each one to a different focus mode. I personally love focus modes and having a different wallpaper for each because it really just helps me stay focused on whatever it is I'm doing. So those are the main iOS 16 customization features, but there is still a lot more we can do with a few extra apps to give you that oomph. The first app is called Color Widget. So some of you may know this one from my previous videos, but with this app, you can edit and customize your home screen with custom designed widgets. I personally love doing this because you can adjust the colors, the fonts, the size, and just match everything to the exact style you're trying to go for with your lock screen and home screen. But another awesome thing you can do with this app is change your app icon colors to take that design just to that next level. As you can see, there are so many different free options to choose from, and you can just go wild with these. So this is looking banging, but we can just take this one step further with a keyboard theme. And for the custom keyboard, we need Gboard. It's pretty ironic, I know, but the important thing is you get a ton of different options. You get a whole bunch of different pre-made themes that you can scroll through and choose from, or you can also customize them. So get this, you can change the keyboard background color, you can change the text color, you also get the option to change the key border color, then you can also change the key tap pop-up color, and you can even change the color and size of the swipe gesture. I mean, this is nuts. So now we are almost complete with the ultimate setup, but there is still a few more hidden iOS 16 settings we can toggle on. 
the first and most important finishing touch is inside the battery settings. All you gotta do is switch on battery percentage and just like that, we now finally have the battery percentage back. Another super important setting that I always gotta have turned on is inside sound and haptic settings. Here, just go inside keyboard feedback and right over there, just turn on haptics. Now, whenever you type and use your keyboard, your iPhone will give a little vibration. As for the last customization setting, just head into your notification settings to change your notification appearance on your lock screen. You can change to either a list view or stack view and I personally like the list view the most. So go ahead and tag me in your designs. And if you're all about that iPhone life, then definitely check out these two videos, but I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!